Should you buy a Mercedes SL? That's the R230 from 2002 uh, to 2011. Should you buy one of these cars? That is the question that a lot of people ask. A lot of people ask this question because the R230, the SL, is problematic. But oh, it's such a beautiful car. There is nothing else on the road as beautiful as a Mercedes SL. You can have the SL350, the SL500, the SL55, the SL63, the SL65. This is one of the most beautiful cars Mercedes has ever, ever made. Now, this one has been modified. It has unique wheels that are, uh, st has a staggered setup. They're wide, gives the car a wider stance. These are 20 inch wheels. They don't come with 20 inch wheels. They come with either 17s or 18s. This car here has been uh, modified or customized to fit my personal taste. But that's what these cars allow you to do. It allows you to customize it to fit and suit your needs, which you expect out of the vehicle. Now, customization is not just cosmetic. Customization is also regarding the suspension. Now, why do I say that? Because you have a problematic active body control suspension that comes with all of these SL models, except for the SL350. Mercedes decided to take the smaller V6 and put a standard coilover setup on there. But these cars, the 500, the 55, the 63, the 65, they all come with ABC, active body control suspension. And they are problematic. That's why this car is lifted on one side because the suspension is getting worked on. The active body control is actually being swapped out for coilovers. These are with the Swiss spring upgrade. The springs are optional for the higher performance um, upgrade to the coilovers. This is the ABC pump, a newer ABC pump that was recently installed on this vehicle. But it has been removed in favor of a standard power steering pump. So with these concerns that will occur, um, these problems, should I say, that will occur with these Mercedes, you have to ask yourself, <laughs> I'm showing you a picture of the standard power steering pump. You have to ask yourself, is it practical? Is it wise to buy a Mercedes SL? It is. You have to anticipate the problems that will occur. There are problems that will take place regarding this SL. You have a convertible top that sometimes does not work. You have um, several valves, pistons that go bad, that leak. And when that happens, you'll notice that your fluid level in your pump in the trunk is low. You'll hear your car struggle to complete the process of lowering or raising your convertible top. You will see leakage at some point. It'll drip off the sides, uh, near the front windshield, on the side window is typically where it leaks. You see, there's problems that's associated with this 21-year-old vehicle for those that were, you know, made in 2002 and three, I guess. It is 2024, so now they're 22 years old, the oldest models. There are issues that come along with ownership of this vehicle, things that you have to anticipate. You have to anticipate suspension failure if it's still on active body control or ABC. You have to anticipate at some point that your convertible top might give you some issues. And well, so you have to just, you know, anticipate expenditures with ownership. There are permanent solutions to the suspension, and that's removal of everything ABC related. You can install, in this case, Silver's Neomax adjustable coilovers. That's what I did to this one. That allowed me to do the customization without having to worry about the suspension failing and the body dropping onto these wheels and tearing these wheels, these tires, these rims up and the fenders up. I'm all about reliability. Believe me, comfort does come along with adjustable coilovers. Don't go strut master, go with Silver's Neomax. Some people do BC racing, but Silver's Neomax has the spring race just right. They all have dampening settings, the ones that are adjustable. You can adjust the height, you can adjust the spring um, preload, you can adjust 
uh, the dampening settings. Uh, but the spring rates are vital. And so with this one, like just I just showed you the uh, Swift Spring Upgrade. That is the more firm, higher performance spring. But even Merce uh, even Silver's Neomax, their standard spring setup is very, very good for this car. For the weight of this car, um, for the handling and expected comfort, you can firm it up if you want to. But even the standard default spring rate is perfect for this car. And that's on the Silver's Neomax. That's what I recommend. But if you choose to maintain ABC, that's okay as well. Just anticipate failure and you having to take the car out of commission and getting that repair. It's cheaper if you do it yourself. If you buy the components that you need and replace them yourself, it's cheaper. If you have to pay somebody, you're going to spend a lot more money. It's just what it is because it is time consuming. It is a messy job. It does require a rodeo. You're going to lose a lot of fluid. You could be introducing some problems. You could be opening up a can of worms and fluid now could be contaminated and cause other issues down the road. And also the pressure on the pump itself has been compromised and hopefully you fix the issue, get the air out of the system without the pump going kaput, <laughs> failing, you know, because all these things are factors. It has to be fixed properly. It has to be bled properly. It has to be rodeoed or the process that the road, the purpose of the rodeo, you have to do it yourself without the rodeo, but still get the air out of the system, get that fluid to act uh to, to to go throughout the system and, and and pressurize properly and hopefully your seals hopefully your accumulators are not bad hopefully your pulse section dampener hopefully all the bells and whistles of the abc system continue to work properly once you replace that part that has failed because if not these other issues will start to come up and then you'll be having more time off the road and in the garage or at the shop and that is why a lot of people get rid of these they sell them for cheap because the ABC system has already failed. They're getting that red light, or even the white light is preemptive to the red light. You're having issues. You can change the fluid every 30,000 or whatever people do, every 3,000 miles. Yeah, that could be time consuming and expensive, but you do what you gotta do to save your ABC if that's the route that you wanna take. But just know that when you're buying these cars, especially if you're buying them for cheap, anticipate ABC issues. Now this car right here is sitting up pretty high because he has the buttons activated where it's sitting up higher. But it's here in Cincinnati, Ohio, at my place of business because I am converting this to coilovers. This is already in process of being uh, converted to coilovers. This is from South Carolina, this is from Indiana. They're coming from all over the, uh, the place because that's what these owners are choosing to do. And I'm willing to do the work for them, of course. That's my business. But SLs are one of the most beautiful cars ever developed by Mercedes, but they're the hardest to keep on the road. A hard top convertible, I mean, you can't beat that. A soft top convertible is compromised. The soft top can get cut. Uh, it doesn't look as good as a hard top. The COK is an is, is a example of a soft top convertible. The old SLs had the soft top convertible option. Well, it was a hard top that comes off manually you have to pick it up you have to pick it up and take it off and you had the soft top up underneath nothing looks as good as a hard top convertible i mean this is man this is a game changer when mercedes decided to do this and then they did it on the slk as well but it's a beautiful beautiful uh option beautiful car and i just took mine out you know that's why the top is down my wife and i we just took this for a spin on the highway you know how many looks and compliments you get on this car I mean, what else looks like this on the road? Nothing. What else handles like this on the road? Nothing. This is the SL55, so it has more performance and it's faster, more powerful. And it has the swift springs. I did that because I drive fast. And I'm, oh my goodness, we're talking about no sway bars on this car. Does it lean excessively? Heck no. This thing handles and turns corners like, <laughs> I mean, man, I hit 80 miles per hour coming onto an entrance ramp and it felt fantastic. It never felt uncontrolled. It never felt like it was uh overly leaning um i never felt you know uncomfortable driving at 80 miles per hour around a corner around a uh entrance ramp this thing handled fantastic so i'm telling you guys without sway bars it's a beautiful car that handles very well very comfortable very safe yes i said it's safe until you've driven one of these heavy low profile cars low center of gravity you have to hit a you have to go airborne or lift one side of this thing up for you to uh, feel unsafe without sway bars. 
This thing hugs the road. Hugs the road. Feels fantastic. Go with a stagger setup is what I recommend. These cars are rear-wheel drive. So go with a stagger setup. Make sure it's wider in the back than it is in the front. And you will have no complaints regarding traction. So people, do what you need to do. These are great cars to own. Customize it how you want. Keep it on factory wheels like this. You can go aftermarket wheels like I did. This is another factory option on the AMGs, but this style right here. You can do whatever you want to do. You can keep ABC, you can go coilovers. But these cars are very nice to own and very nice to drive. They're comfortable if you take long trips out of town, but just know that you want to be safe and make sure that it's reliable taking a long trip out of town. And so I recommend coilovers if you want the ultimate reliability. You don't want to dump any more money into the suspension. The convertible top is going to have to get some love. It is what it is. When it fails, you have to find somebody that knows what they're doing, who can drive. You, now, some people, some people do it themselves. There are tutorials online. There's forums and there's also YouTube uh, content on how to fix the top and replace those um, pistons or those valves or whatever that goes bad that starts to leak. There's kits that you can buy on eBay that are very cheap. You can go on my website and I have that kit. It comes with the O-rings. It comes with the tools that you need in order to repair uh, the piston. Replace the O-ring that fails inside of the piston. Now, this one already had all the work done. The person I bought it from in Orlando, Florida, he had all that work done. The convertible top, every valve or piston or strut or whatever you call them inside of the top, there's a bunch of them. Replaced them all. While the, th while the top was opened up and uh, the one was being repaired, he replaced them all. So that was a great chance for me to buy one that won't need any work for quite a long time. This is an 03. So we're talking about 21 year old original parts that were recently replaced within the last year or two. So I'm happy about that. So I'm driving this thing like worry free. Suspension is done. The top has been repaired. Only thing I need to do now is like upgrade the audio system. This car handles fantastic and I love it. I love it. Now the silver one that I had like this that I sold, it still is on ABC. It's still working on active body control suspension. At some point he said, the owner of that said, once it fails, he'll get it swapped out to coilovers. He's just gonna drive it until it fails, which is what a lot of people do. Some people are preemptive and proactive and they get it swapped out before failure because they don't want to get stuck on the side of the road or out of town or on, on, a, on a nice date with their significant other. They don't want the embarrassment <laughs> and the inconvenience. You know what I mean? So is this a good car to buy? Yes, but be prepared for the expenditures that come along with it. Have a game plan, guys. Know what to do when failure does happen. And it will happen. Just know what to do when it happens. All right? Decision is up to you. Make a decision and enjoy your car. Definitely a car worth buying. You can get these cars for very cheap. For what they used to cost, you know, $90,000 uh, up to $140,000 brand new. You can get them now for anywhere between, I mean, I bought one for $1,500 before. But you can get them anywhere between average price, $5,000 up to, you know, $20-something thousand. I don't know. Depends on the condition. But just, you know. Consider what it's going to take to keep it on the road. It's a beautiful car. Nothing like it. Nothing like it.